Hello everybody, I uh, just wanted to say I'm really really sorry the last time I put up this over penetration mechanic as well as the uh, penetration mechanics part 2 I got some stuff wrong and uh, I really really apologize uh, to all of you for that so here's the video sort of corrected to make sure things are correct and I'm putting it up again so once again my apologies folks Hello everybody and welcome back to another Captain's Academy episode with your instructor Chase and today we are going to be talking about the over penetration mechanic because you've probably been firing at ships occasionally with armor piercing and sometimes you see pens and sometimes you see over pens and you're probably wondering why those over pens occur. So today's target ship is going to be the Kuma. Now the Kuma as you can tell has a huge citadel area but with a very, very thin belt. Now, most of you who've ever run into Kumas at the lower tiers and have fired at it with arm piercing, when it's giving you a broadside, typically find that you either delete the ship or something strange happens and you don't seem to get a citadel. Well, hopefully in this video, I can explain why. So today's uh, ship that I'm going to be using to actually hit the Kuma is the Furutaka armed with 203 millimeter guns. So let's answer an important question. What causes armor-piercing shells to go boom? Well, the first thing they have to do is they have to arm themselves, and they need to get ready to explode. This happens after the armor-piercing shell has penetrated one-sixth the shell size worth of armor. Now, once that is done, the shell takes another 0.033 seconds before it explodes and does damage. So the very, very first requirement for the armor piercing to work is that they penetrate one-sixth of the shell size worth of armor. And it's the reason, now for the Furutaka, that would be 33.8 millimeters in order to fuse. And it's the reason why I can shoot at the bow of a Kuma all day long and all I will see is overpen. Because the Kuma at the bow area here has 10 millimeters of armor per, si well, per plate. So on one side it's 10, on the other side it's 10. But it doesn't matter. The armor piercing shell will hit the first 10, not arm, go through the ship, hit the second 10 millimeter plate, still not arm, and then just go outside the uh, ship on the other side. And so it doesn't really matter what range I choose to shoot at it. Even if I choose to shoot at a Kuma at the bow, let's say 11 kilometers away, which mind you, the shells have dramatically slowed down by then, they should still be doing nothing but overpenning because the armor is just too thin for the armor piercing to actually arm itself so let's see and there you go continue to get over pens even at further distances well that's okay you say because hey what i can do is simply go over and shift my fire to the citadel area now the kuma has 65 millimeters of armor which means that by the time it penetrates about half, just over, I think, halfway, uh, the shell should arm, and then I should be getting citadel hits because you can't overpenetrate a citadel, right? Well, not actually true. As you can see, you can actually overpen citadels at really, really close range. And the reason why this happens is because step two of the overpenetration mechanic explains this. You still need a certain amount of time for the shells to go boom. Still, you will notice that on this salvo, even though most of them were over pens, I got one citadel. I'll explain that in a little bit. First, step two. Now, before I get to the explanation of step two, I first have to actually give credit to uh, Deus Cannon on the NA server for pointing out to me that you can overpenetrate a citadel at certain conditions. Now, his request was that I make a video about overpenetration and make a note that yes, you can overpen a citadel, but. When he requested it and I started investigating it, it opened up a whole new can of worms. And so this is just the beginning. The hard stuff comes a little bit later. All right, let me explain step two. So we know that after the shell has armed itself, it takes another 0 0.033 seconds before the shells go boom for the Furtaka's 203 millimeter guns. Now these guns have a starting muzzle velocity of 840 meters per second. Now assuming that I hit the ship, like the Kuma, very, very close, I'm losing very little of the muzzle velocity. So, doing the math, if I'm going 840 meters per second and I try to see how far the shell will fly in 0 0.033 seconds, it's 27.72 meters. Now, what's important here is that the Kuma's beam, when I'm shooting fully broadside at 90 degrees, the beam is 14.2 meters. And so the shells are going through the first armor plate. They still have enough penetration and speed to actually meet the second plate penetrate the other 65 millimeters of plate and exit the ship. 
and the result is an overpenetration. Now this part, typically you can verify if you're firing at a destroyer. And let's say you're firing at the broadside of a destroyer. Destroyers have very thin armor. Shells typically just go right through and overpenetrate. However, if you're shooting at a destroyer that's running away from you and you land a shot into the destroyer and now it covers the entire length of the ship, the shells, even though they're going pretty fast, they cannot cover a lot of the distance uh, to actually penetrate through the entire destroyer from bow to stern or from stern to bow in 0 0.033 seconds. And therefore, when you're playing a battleship and you're shooting destroyers, you will actually get penetration damage, but only when destroyers are actually giving you that full length to shoot at. And so everything was perfectly okay from my understanding what I was told initially until I tried it with the Shimakaze on the Kuma at close range, even though supposedly if you look at penetration and everything else in terms of muzzle velocity, there's enough penetration to get overpent up close. Well, took the Shimakaze into a training room, lined it up next to Akuma, fired my guns, and got the complete opposite result. I was able to get citadels at very, very close ranges. There was no overpenetration. So, I know initially my thought was, okay, there's something else going on, uh, there might be some sort of loss of penetration because the shell is too small, so on and so forth. Actually, it's much more simple than that. Um, it's just a matter of the detonator time. So for most destroyers, uh, with the one exception of the USN destroyer, starting from the second uh, set of guns on the Nicholas and up, uh, most destroyers have 0 0.01 second detonator times compared to the 0 0.033 seconds for the heavy cruisers. And there are going to be exceptions to the rules. For, for example, like most light cruisers are 0 0.025, but the Cleveland has 0 0.01, while the Krasny Krim is at 0 0.03, even though it's only armed with 130 millimeter guns. If you look at, for example, uh, battleships, most of them are very similar to the heavy cruisers at 0 0.033. However, most of the low-tier German battleships, uh, low-tier U.S. battleships like the Wyoming and the Arc Beta, uh, IGN low-tier battleships like the Ishizuchi and the Kawachi, those ships all have detonator times at 0 0.01. Now, there's sort of pros and cons to having both a very short detonator time or a very long detonator time. So, let's talk about the short one first. So, for short detonator times, your advantages are typically if your shell arms itself, uh, you will generally see a detonation very, very soon after that. So, the chances of you overpending a target is very, very low, even at very close ranges. So, let's say you're in a Cleveland against a uh, Kuma, even at point blank range, you're still going to get those citadels if you hit the citadel. However, the weakness is if you're shooting at a target and their citadel is underwater and you have to go for an underwater penetration, so you want your shell to hit the water, travel a bit more, and hit that citadel underwater, that'll be quite a bit harder for something with a very short detonator time as pretty much a hit a, it's going to hit the water and the shell is going to explode. On the flip side, the long detonator time has the advantage of being able to hit those underwater citadels. But if you're really up close, uh, the long detonator time is a disadvantage because you're likely to just overpen your targets and not do any citadel damage. All right, so now having the proper understanding of the detonator time, as well as, of course, what requirements uh, are needed for your shells to arm, you now can understand why sometimes you will get citadel hits at certain ranges and why sometimes you know, even though you aim perfectly, you're actually getting over penetrations. Although with certain ships, there are, as I mentioned earlier, exceptions to the rule. So you really have to learn the individual characteristics of your ship. But aside from that, there are a couple other things that affect penetration of your shells. And those are shell weight, muzzle velocity, air drag, and projectile crop. And I'll sort of explain each of these in more detail in a second. In the previous video, there is also two other things, which is the angle of your penetration, as well as shell normalization that uh, plays a role in how well your shell is able to do. However, the four main variables are the ones I mentioned uh, before. So let me sort of cover them one by one. So first up is shell weight. And the simple way to explain shell weight is that while up close, shell weight might not play as big of a role when it comes to penetration, at the longer ranges, it definitely does. And that's because while lighter shells are fine at close range, 
When you go further out, lighter shells tend to lose their speed faster than heavier shells. So a good way to think about this is, let's say U.S. destroyers, um, when you get to 127mm shells, at longer ranges they're not very effective, although at closer ranges they're pretty effective. Compared to the Russian 130mm DD shells, uh, the arm piercing, which at even sort of further ranges, they're still pretty effective, although at close range they kind of don't really seem all that different from the U.S. ones. So shell weight is mostly important for the longer range engagements. Now the most important variable, generally speaking, uh, when it comes to penetration is actually muzzle velocity. So obviously the higher the muzzle velocity, the better as there is more initial energy. And as long as the shell weight's good and the air drag is pretty good, then you're going to be able to maintain that velocity for a longer duration of time. And theoretically, by the end of it, your shell should have better penetration. Although, I'll get to that last thing about projectile crop and sort of explain the difference there in a second. So, muzzle velocity, really, really important. Generally speaking, you want to look at a ship and see high muzzle velocity. That will really determine whether or not you have pretty solid penetration. Although, like I mentioned, there's other variables that do affect muzzle velocity, such as shell weight. And of course, there's also something called air drag. And air drag is one of those things that you don't see listed. It does have to come from data mine data. But air drag is one of those values. It's how much your shells will slow down depending on how much distance they fly. So if you have a shell where the air drag is low, it means it's very, very efficient and it'll continue to maintain speed over long distances. However, you have certain shells in the game where the air drag value is actually really high. So those are the shells where the minute you fire the shells, it feels like they just lost their velocity. One of the examples is like the Ishizuchi. The Ishizuchi actually has decent initial muzzle velocity. However, the air drag, where for let's say good Russian shells are like 0.25, the air drag value on the Ishizuchi shells 0.5 something. So those shells, if you've ever played with an Ishizuchi, you fire them at close range, they seem to have some velocity, and then the minute they get out to beyond a few kilometers, you just see the shells go, and they slow down immediately. So air drag is another thing to keep in mind. And finally, you have this thing called projectile crop, which, well, last time I sort of tried to explain, I didn't do that great of a job, but this time I think I have a better explanation. Projectile crop is how effective your shells will be at penetrating when they finally get to the target. Now, the best way to test this is obviously to compare two ships that are very, very similar in all traits. It's kind of pointless to compare two very different ships and then try to draw conclusions from that. So the best way to do it is to say, all right, let's take a look at which two ships are super similar. In this case, the Marblehead or Omaha versus the Murmansk. These two ships, in terms of shell weight, air drag, muzzle velocity, really, really, really similar. Uh, the differences are tiny. The big difference is in the crop values. The Marblehead Omaha's crop value is 1,772. The Murmansk's crop is 2,692. Now, if you divide these two numbers, you get 1.519187, something like that. Therefore, in theory, the Murmansk shells should be roughly 1.52 times more effective. So how did I test this is I went into battle and I picked a ship with 100 millimeters of belt armor, looked at the penetration graph and said, okay, right here at this distance, the Omaha should be able to penetrate 100 millimeters. Now let me see if I shoot at the side of something with 100 millimeters, do I get the shell being completely blocked, which in case you'll see the shell shattering ribbon, or do I see the Citadel hit? And then the next thing you do after that is you kind of inch forward, inch back to figure out where your shells will shatter versus where it will actually get a citadel. And in the first test, it was at roughly 7.9 kilometers where I was able to get the citadel hit without interference from water. So the next thing you do after that is you grab another ship, so in something with 152 millimeters of belt armor, set the same distance, and rinse repeat the experiment and try to hit a citadel. And as you can see, I got really nice RNG where the shells were nicely packed, hit the center at a zero degree angle, and I was able to get two citadel hits. So um, at 7.9 with the marble head, I was able to get citadel hits because I was able to just penetrate that 100 millimeters of armor. Now, if I was to try this with a Murmansk, I should be at the same range, but trying something with 
roughly 1.52 times the armor of the Chepayev, which would be the Des Moines. So I'm going to start at this exact same point, 7.9 kilometers and try. Now my guess is most likely I'm not going to be penetrating the Citadel because the ratio wasn't 1.52, it was like 1.519 something. So my guess is at 7.9, what I'll mostly see when I do hit the belt is the shell actually shattering. And so I'm just gonna keep sort of testing that, hoping that eventually I get a shot that lands somewhere on the belt armor without the interference of water again to see what happens. Yeah, I do get a couple of penetrating hits, but really not much luck when it ends up coming to belt hits, right? A lot of them, especially like that one, they hit water, so you're not really sure if it's water playing the bigger role or anything else. Now I do have to clarify that yes, I did do this test like repeatedly a whole bunch of times, and at 7.9, I never really got the Citadel penetrations on Des Moines. However, when I inched over a little bit to 7.8, the Citadels pretty much came right away. And it's at 7.8, that's where the Krupp was just enough to give me like a little bit more penetration that I needed to be able to hit the Citadel on the ship. And that pretty much explains what the Krupp value is, is that it provides uh, a sort of, I guess, value for how good the quality of your shells are when it finally comes to actually penetrating the target. So certain ships, like the US ships, in terms of muzzle velocity and everything else, they're not as good as maybe some other nations, but their crop values being phenomenal means that when their shells finally do get to target, they will still do their job. Having this understanding of what all these numbers sort of do will also allow you to assess the weapons uh, that your ship carries. And not only that, but you're further able to expand on what to do at certain times because you might otherwise find that hey look I'm shooting at this but I'm not getting the intended result. So the first thing that of course you, it definitely helps you with is the ability to assess your performance of your weapons. So in the past the only way to do so was to look at the muzzle velocity and go oh look okay my uh, shells are likely to fly at a better arc because pretty good velocity. And then finally, when it actually hits the target, oh look, it'll do X amount of damage. And that's about all you got. But having information like the shell mass, the velocity, the air drag, etc., allow you to make assessments in much, much more detail. So take a look at this, Warspite versus Byron. Now, if you were to look at the two ships from a port view, you might go, well, you know, there's a little bit of difference, but nothing substantial. I mean... Uh, looks like the Byron has better muzzle velocity, Warspite looks like it has a bit worse, so maybe Byron has better uh, arcs than the Warspite, damage looks pretty similar. Okay, you know, you may not have that big of an opinion about how different these guns are and how they might affect the way you play. But with detailed information, here's what now we know. The Warspite has a much heavier shell, 879 kilograms versus the 750 kilogram shell of the Byron. Now, from the Shimakaze versus Kavarov's example, we know that the lighter shell is not a disadvantage when up close. It'll maintain its penetration quite well. However, over distance, it'll lose energy. It'll lose its speed. And so it'll become less effective at range. The worst bite, heavier shell, doesn't really have an advantage at close range. However, the further away it goes, the better it maintains that energy. Okay, so maybe this tells you a little bit about how these two ships are going to play. The Byron maybe has to play a bit closer, worse by can hang a bit further back. Then you have a look at the air drag constant, and you're like, uh-oh, here's where something very, very different occurs. Warspite's air drag is 0 0.3415. Okay, so yes, you lose speed, but you lose speed less because look at the Byron. The Byron's air drag is 0 0.40. Now, if you take a look at the actual curve, you'll see that at zero kilometer, at zero kilometer for the Bayern, the penetration is over 700 millimeters. For the Warspite at zero, it's eh, maybe 660. However, by 10 kilometers, take a look where the green lines are, and you'll notice something very different happens. On the Warspite, you still have an excess of 450 millimeters of penetration, and the Bayern, you're about me around 410. By the time you get to 14 kilometers, assuming we follow the red line, right? The blue line, we could say, all right, look at the blue line, but then you look at both blue lines and you'll still see that the worst bite has an advantage. But okay, going back to the red line. If you get to 14 kilometers, you'll see that the worst bite still maintains somewhere in the vicinity, maybe 380 millimeters of penetration, but the Bayern's now down to like 320. 
So what does this tell you? Well, this tells you that the War Spite is okay to hang back a little bit. Your shells will still have pretty devastating penetrating power. But for the Bayern, going too far back, maybe not a good thing. You have to get closer in. Which actually is a good thing for the Byron because it complements the fact that it's got turtleback armor and it's meant to get up close and personal. But there is a disadvantage for getting too close, right? You get close, if your penetration goes up a lot, what ends up happening is now, now I'm going to go all the way back to the beginning, is that let's say a cruiser turns broadside in front of you and now your penetration is too high what ends up happening, and of course your shell velocity is still really good because you're much, much closer, is that even though you hit the Citadel area, you might just overpen it. And so this is why this information is also really, really important to have because it tells you, okay, if I'm engaging a battleship with thick armor at close range, I'm going to be okay. However, if it's a cruiser, maybe instead of rushing in there and trying to brawl, maybe I should run away instead because if I run away, I can stretch that range a little bit and drop my penetration so it's enough to penetrate the citadel of the cruiser. This kind of information will force you to think about much, much more than, oh yes, let me just keep going bow in and I'll charge in there and hopefully I'll hit citadel and see what happens. This information also helps explain things like, why does the York's AP suck so much? Well, I mean, on paper, it looks like the York has bigger guns. It's 21 centimeters, 210 millimeters, compared to the 203 millimeters of the Pensacola. And yet, the York is just worse, and now we know why. Take a look at the York's data, and you'll see 108 kilogram shell, so lighter than the Pensacola shell by 10 kilograms, so we already know what that does. Yes, the York starts at higher muzzle velocity, but because of the lighter shell, it loses muzzle velocity faster. And to make things worse, look at the drag constant on the York, 0.48 compared to 0.321. So that means the York's AP shell pretty much leaves the barrel and immediately starts bleeding speed like crazy. And as you can tell, look at the penetration graph, and there's this massive dip in its penetrative power. Never mind that when it finally gets the target and actually hits the enemy ship, the York's Krupp performance is worse than that of the Pensacola as well. So this is one of the reasons why when you're playing the Pensacola, let's say you're 10 kilometers out and you're shooting armor piercing, you're still reasonably confident, especially when you're shooting at broadside cruisers, that you will get Citadel hits. On the York, once you get out to 10 kilometers and you're trying to use AP on broadside cruisers, you're pretty much hopeless there in trying to get citadels. You just don't have enough penetrating power. And when your shells do hit, yes, your corrupt performance isn't bad, but you just don't have any of the energy there to really try to get through the armor of enemy ships. Well, how does this affect me in game, you ask, right? I mean, yes, you can do all the analysis on paper, but what about gameplay? How does this change? Well, let's take this instance, for example. Here I am, there's a Kuma, I'm in a Furutaka. Now we know what happens when I'm at 0 0.4, 0 0.5 kilometers of a Kuma, if I'm broadside to it, right? If I shoot, I'm gonna overpen the Citadel and the Kuma's gonna get away scot-free. But now that you know things about armor angling and you know about normalization, and of course all the stuff today about how shells behave, Instead, now you can shoot, maybe decide to shoot at targets that are maybe still a little bit angled. So take, for example, this Kuma. If I waited for it to go broadside, I would just overpen, not do anything, right? But hey, instead, I'm going to shoot at the Kuma while it's still angled. When it's angled, its armor is more effective, okay? And so when my shells hit it and the crop value starts to take effect, hey, it's now got to deal with more armor. Therefore, instead of overpenning, maybe I'm going to get the Citadel. So let me try it out, right? Kuma is angled, shooting into the Citadel area, and there I go. Instead of getting overpens, I'm getting those Citadel hits. So what do you do if the enemy does give you the broadside, you ask? Because, you know, it's going to happen, right? And what if my guns have too much penetration and they're just going to overpen? So what do I do then? Well, the other thing you could do is, let's say here we go with the Kuma, 0 0.4 kilometers. If I shoot at the Citadel at the waterline, I will see overpens. What you do then is utilize the water. Instead of shooting at the waterline, shoot the water a little bit short of the waterline. And what will happen is that the water will reduce 
the penetration of your shells. It'll reduce the speed of your shells, it'll reduce that penetrative power, and then what will end up happening is you'll barely get through the first plate of armor, and then you won't come out at the other end, thereby getting citadel hits. So I'm gonna shoot the water here, and you'll see that I should be able to get citadel hits. And there you go. I shot the water, I used the water to slow the shells down, and I was able to get the citadel hits that I was looking for. This information now, especially the ones about detonator time and things like that, is also incredibly useful information when you're playing defensively. So let's say you know a ship has a very long detonator time. So in that case, let's say you're up close to the battleship, you can go, hey, you know what, I can go broadside and most likely that battleship will pen. So let's say you're running into a Congo, which has 0 0.033 as a detonator time. All right, if you're at like four kilometers in Akuma, you can show that broadside and not be worried about getting Citadel to death. However, if you were to run into a ship like, let's say, oh, the Imperator Nikolai, maybe this is not a good idea at all because the Imperator Nikolai has 0 0.01 second for detonator time, which means the Imperator Nikolai will not be able to overpen you at all, even if you're at zero kilometers. The shells will simply hit, and they will pen, they'll arm, and they'll immediately blow up, pretty much. And you're going to take massive citadel damage and pretty much get erased off of the map. So these are things that now when you're in a fight and you're in ships that are lightly armored, these are things that you have to contemplate now. It's like when and in what time and in what kinds of situations can I show the broadside? Can I not show broadside? Should I be going bow in and offering the full length of the ship for them to shoot at? Or should I actually give them, uh, let's say, a bow to shoot at maybe? Or maybe I give them, yeah, there's all these things, all these questions you have to think about when you're playing defensively. And so that kind of changes the way certain times and certain conditions you can play the game. Because maybe it's not a good idea for a destroyer to be going bow in and rushing a target because any battleship that shoots you is going to get loads of penetration damage instead of just overpenning you. And if you're a destroyer, that could be the difference between dying right away and actually surviving to fight another day. Of course, now that I know all this, does it change anything for me? And one of the first things that it might change for me is... Well, these British cruisers, because in the past I've lamented that, oh, you know, the Citadel sits really high out of the water. Well, if you're thinking about tier 10 games where ships have really big shells, really heavy shells, with really great muzzle velocities and really great penetration, well, maybe this really thin belt armor isn't really a disadvantage, because the British cruiser might be able to show a broadside, and simply just take over penetration damage as the shells go right through. Of course, maybe certain other ships can say, okay, instead of engaging British cruisers up close, maybe we'll keep range, right? Because normally you think, oh, it's an easily penetrated citadel, maybe I'll just rush it with, let's say, a Zhao or a Moskva. Well, instead, maybe the better option is, okay, look, its guns maybe can't really penetrate my armor, maybe I'll show it a broadside and now I'll run away, and so when the ship's range sort of extends, I'll be able to pen it. Or citadel it, because, again, as the range increases, my shells will slow down, the amount of penetration they have will reduce, and maybe it'll be enough to actually get through this armor, arm, and detonate, and maybe I'll do better damage that way. Furthermore, if you're playing the British cruiser, instead of being afraid of everything, maybe staying at range, you might be thinking, huh, so now that I know this, maybe I'll just rush that battleship in front, and maybe I won't be afraid to show it my broadside, and then also be able to bring my torpedo armament to bear. So these are all things that will affect your gameplay. Not only that, but it also should help you to at least rethink certain engagement play styles with certain ships. Maybe instead of, like with the Kuma, instead of actually trying to angle, maybe not angle at all and just give people the broadside, invite them to shoot at it, and laugh as they overpen you all day long. Anyways, folks, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope uh, it's given you something to think about. If you got any questions, leave those in the comment section below. Aside from all that, take care, folks. Have a good one, and I'll talk to all of you again soon.